Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks and welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now the subject of today's film, video if you like, is the use of poison gas during the First World War and the different styles of gas masks. I've got a collection of, of uh, replica gas masks that I'm going to show you. But if we go back a little bit, I've already done a little film about this, the first gas attack, uh, 22nd of April 1915, Second Battle of Ypres. It was horrendous what happened and, and even German soldiers couldn't believe how bad it was. But once it had been released, I can't understand why they didn't think of this, then the, the enemy of Germany is going to do the same thing. And the British did it at the Battle of Luz in, in September 1915. But what the Germans did first was they installed the gas canisters in their trenches and waited for their meteorologists to tell them, the weather is perfect, the wind will be in the right direction, we've been studying it. So the British, Battle of Luz, we install the chemicals, we're ready with these great big canisters of this terrible gas, and the meteorologists saying, the wind's going to change, and our high command ignored them. And we let the gas go forward, and our troops, with very rudimentary gas masks, charge the Germans and the gas comes back on us. The Battle of Luz was desperate. So let me show you, let me go through some of these um, gas masks for you, right? First gas was just chlorine. Yeah, like a, I suppose, kind of a bleach. It affects your eyes, your nose, mucous membranes. If you get it down into your lungs, then it's going to be fatal, but it's not a quick death, yeah? But as the war went on, you had phosgene gas and then mustard gas. The famous one, mustard gas, uh, is, is the one because it, it smelled like a mustardy smell and it also had that yellow-brown colour as it, as it came over. But hey, this, this gas, right? Fritz Haber, yeah? He was a scientist in Germany. He was designing, inventing this gas, this poison gas, yeah? But his wife, Clara, she was a scientist. Now think back, 1914, 1915. She was a scientist in her own right. Yeah. She confronted her husband, so the story goes. And you can research this yourself about what was he doing with this poison gas. And they had a row about it. Now I read one account which says, uh, Fritz just simply turned on her and says, I have no allegiance to mankind anymore as a scientist. My allegiance is to the fatherland and the Kaiser. Heard that kind of thing before. And Clara commits suicide, shoots herself with her husband's um, service revolver. I like to think of this woman who was highly intelligent, a woman well ahead of her time, making a stand against what her husband was doing. So let me show you, let me go through some of these um, gas masks for you, right? So the first defense, urinate on a sock. Tie the sock over your nose and mouth. Can you imagine trying to do that when people are shooting at you? When your eyes are streaming? Not only that, can you imagine if you just had a pee and you had no urine? Do you go and ask your friend to pee on your sock for you, please? Yeah? Joking aside, that was the first chance. So a British chemist, Mr Haldane, uh, came up with this. Inside, it's a gauze pad. And then there's a layer of linen on either side. Sodium thiosulfate. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's soaked in it. Tie it up with your mouth and your chin. Yeah. To protect your eyes, there's a couple of versions. Welding goggles. Which is fine unless there's an explosion and the glass goes through your eyes. Also, the old guys at home who were welding, making ships and things, they needed these. There was always these knee-jerk reactions. So while old ladies and, and people in the UK are actually making these in their front room, there was a knee-jerk reaction and they sent these soaked in that sodium thistle sulfate stuff. Anyway, whatever it's called. This is a lady's sanitary towel. This is how desperate we were. And of course you can't just empty the country of these. The ladies need them, bless them. So we're catching up. 
the pad and a proper eye shield. And this is quite something. This is the first use of mica, a form of plastic. One of the problems is it turned, I think, green with mustard gas touching it and it became very brittle. But this, this is emergency, right? So as the gas gets stronger, you've got that uh, chlorine, then you've got phosogene coming up. They've got to really treat this seriously. So I've got to take my hat off now. So we have the Hypo Hood, officially called the Smoke Helmet. But I wanted to show you how it's actually contained. You have a nice linen bag, metal buttons, which are really easy to undo, but it's what's inside. As you open your bag, the lid has got your hood inside. And as you pull your hood out, it's supposed to unroll like this. Now it's contained in a waterproof bag inside because this is soaked in sodium hypersulfate, right? Now let's put it on. This one isn't, by the way, this is the replica. So you put this on, you tuck it in. Problem is this, there is no valve. So you're breathing in and out of this. Also this mica, because it's such a large piece here to see through, it often cracked. So, all right, it's, it's the first honest attempt. But let me show you this now, the pH hood. I haven't got this in the bag. This is an excellent reproduction, yeah, and it is double lined. So hopefully the outside is soaked, the inside is dry. It also has a valve that you breathe in and out. So not bad, not bad. So you put it on, then have a listen. Close it all up, you can see, yeah? Now have a listen to this. Mm. If you're out of breath and you're breathing deep, this vibrates. So in the night time, if there's a gas about, the enemy can hear you. But this is a good attempt, yeah? Except for one problem. When it dries out, you've got to have it dipped again in the hypersulfate, yeah? Did you hear that? Sodium hypersulfate, oh, you got it, yeah? So you would, after you come back from the front line, uh, excuse me, Sarge, it's, uh, it's drying out. Can I have uh, a bucket? No, you can't dip it in yourself. Join the queue. Hand yours in. Get a new one soaked. But actually, it's not a new hood. The guy ate down, actually handed it in. So all his snot and spit is actually in this. But don't forget, we're talking over 100 years ago. Infection, war. Hell, wasn't it? But as the old gas gets stronger, the mustard gas, the terrible stuff, they had to come up with a genuine respirator. And I've got a copy of what's called a box respirator here. These were out in 1916, but come 1917, everybody got one. So it's worn there. It has a filter and I'll show you this in a moment. But when you get this out, it should be inside out. And it has a clasp for your nose and like a small a snorkel there. So somebody's clanging gas, gas, gas. Don't stand there going gas, gas, gas. Put your respirator on first. Otherwise you're gonna do that thing called dying. Yeah, so you put it on. This was so successful that the Germans 
come up with an idea. Let's have another gas. One that when you send it, they can't see it, smell it or anything. It's not poisonous gas in the true words. It's actually a vomit gas. And as soon as you've released the vomit gas, give it a few minutes to permeate amongst the British, yeah? And then uh, release the mustard gas. They can see it. They will panic. They will put on their gas mask. <laughs> But once it's on, great, isn't it? The vomit gas takes effect and you will start to puke up your guts. But you can't take off your respirator. If you do, you'll be gassed. So they put in extra pockets at the side so you can retch away and fill up your respirator. It won't harm you, yeah? This is a horrible subject, isn't it? But I want to show you this. This is the filter. These had um, asbestos in them. Now it's broken down into dust. First, second wheel respirators. Don't touch them. Don't put them on. Do you know in 1925, there was a treaty signed by many of the countries around the world prohibiting the use of chemical and biological uh, weapons. But you get to the Second World War and look at the siege of Warsaw, yeah, the Warsaw Uprising. The Nazis used poison gas down in the cellars. Um, I understand the Japanese in the Second World War some used some forms of this. And then the Vietnam War. And then you come to Syria and what has happened in Iraq in recent years. Poison gas is still being used, still being manufactured. And that kind of does my head in. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed our film. If that's the kind of word you can use, perhaps you've found it interesting. And if you have, do me a favour, thumbs up. And uh, join in the comments. If you've got a point of view on this, then let's get it in, in the comments because I love the forums that I've got going. They are really great. Um, and if you're a subscriber, hey, thanks a bunch. Yeah. And if you're not a subscriber, then press the subscriber button and ding that bell. Yeah, dinging the bell was one of the warnings for gas. Gas, gas, gas. Thank you very much for your time.